Bernie Sanders has obviously been very hard on Amazon CEO Jeff Bezos, and rightfully so, because when you are the richest human being on the planet and your workers are forced to pee in bottles in order to save time so they can be more productive for you and make you more money, then that just demonstrates what a fundamental failure our capitalist system is is the fact that our system allows something like that to happen, the fact that that type of phenomenon is even possible, it's representative of everything that is wrong with our system. Now, Bernie Sanders calls this out. And at a recent event, he jokingly talked about how it's obvious why the Washington Post is biased against him because he always calls out Jeff Bezos. And Jeff Bezos obviously hates Bernie Sanders, and since he owns the Washington Post, it's obvious why there's so much negativity about Bernie from the Washington Post. Now, the Washington Post actually responded, and this evoked a pretty strong response from CNN as well, and they're pushing back, back hardly, saying, um, no, the fact that Bernie Sanders is saying this, not only is it Trumpian, but it's actually dangerous. So we're going to see what they had to say. And then I have a lot to say about this. Um, when we return, take a look. The Washington Post is pushing back at, at criticism from Senator Bernie Sanders. The 2020 Democratic hopeful blasted the Post coverage of his campaign. And he argues that it is biased because it is owned by Amazon CEO Jeff Bezos. Listen to Sanders in New Hampshire yesterday. Anybody here know how much Amazon paid in taxes last year? Yeah. See, and I talk about that all of the time, and then I wonder why the Washington Post, which is owned by Jeff Bezos, who owns Amazon, doesn't write particularly good articles about me. I don't know why. He failed to provide any evidence of that. Those past comments along those lines were echoed by his campaign and prompted this reply by Marty Barron, the executive editor for The Washington Post. Quote, Senator Sanders is a member of a large club of politicians of every ideology who complain about their coverage. Contrary to the conspiracy theory that the senator seems to favor, Jeff Bezos allows our newsroom to operate with full independence, as our reporters and editors can attest. Kirsten Powers is here, columnist for USA Today, and Brittany Shepard, national politics reporter for Yahoo News. Good morning, guys. Um, Good morning. I was a little surprised, uh, Kirsten, to hear Sanders say it himself, but... It's not new to see his campaign really taking on the media without providing any evidence of bias. Just listen to his campaign manager, Faz Shakir. He was on Reliable Sources with Brian Stelter just a few weeks ago. In about you know a minute or so or two minutes or so, you're going to cut to commercial breaks and you're going to see some pharmaceutical ads. You're going to see a lot of ads that are that are basically paying your bills and the bills of of this uh, the entire media enterprise and what that ends up doing is incentivizing you and others to make sure that you're asking the questions and driving the conversations in certain areas and not in certain areas. So Kirsten Bryan followed up, asked for evidence. He didn't provide any. But this seems like a really dangerous line. Continued accusations against the media with no basis in fact or evidence provided. Yeah, I think it's perfectly in bounds to complain about your coverage, right? If you think, you know, and this is this is what every single campaign does. I mean, even Barack Obama's campaign complained about their coverage, right? Sure. So it's not like this is the, people often think when they're running for president that they are the only person who doesn't like their coverage. And that's that's just not true. Um, this moving into these kind of conspiracy theories about why is what's different. And, and I think in the climate that we're in right now with the president of the United States who has really gone after all media that hasn't fallen completely in line with him uh, and, and, and really is offering full-throated support, pretty much everybody else has been attacked um, mm -hmm. you know, as, as fake news and not trustworthy. And so I think what the Sanders campaign is doing is, is falling into, it's using that same playbook, frankly. Yeah. And it would be problematic even without Donald Trump, but considering the culture that we're in where the media is under such constant attack um, mm -hmm. I think that you should be very careful about the accusations you make and you better be able to back them up <laughs> I don't think any standard of evidence will suffice for them because they are in that bubble so they're unable to be introspective and believe that they're capable of doing anything wrong but I mean just the fact that we have corporate owned news outlets in and of itself is a problem if you are a corporate owned capitalist news outlet, then there's inherently going to be issues with that outlet. Inherently. Because news 
should not have these types of profit incentives, these incentives that are perverse. They should be concerned with the delivery of news and that exclusively, but they're not. They don't care about the news. What they care about is increasing profit. Now, what they said was that Bernie Sanders failed to provide any evidence that the Washington Post is biased against him. Now, maybe he didn't do so in that particular segment that they linked to, but if you read the Washington Post, how do you not logically deduce that they are, in fact, biased against Bernie Sanders? I mean, in 2016, they ran 16 negative news stories about Bernie Sanders in 16 hours. And within the first 24 hours of his 2020 campaign launch, they published four negative news stories in two days. Now, I don't think that anyone who says that the Washington Post is biased is suggesting that Jeff Bezos is ordering these negative stories to be written about Bernie Sanders. Nobody's saying that. And maybe it's the case that they absolutely do operate with full independence. But what we're saying is when you compare the coverage that Bernie Sanders receives to other candidates, disproportionately they are negative when you juxtapose his coverage with other candidates. Of course, every candidate is going to complain about the coverage that they get if it's negative. But I mean, there is absolutely a limit to when we can actually start to question whether or not the uh, news outlet in question is pushing an agenda. And it's very clear that that's what the Washington Post is doing. Because again, they are a business. They don't care about the news. This is all about making money to them. And what they don't want to tell you is that, you know, even if there may not necessarily be an explicit filtering process when it comes to news, maybe Jeff Bezos doesn't have to check off every article from the Washington Post. But I mean, this happens, this filtering process, if you will, happens when you get hired because they're not going to hire you unless you're going to be one of the individuals that is not going to rock the boat. And they make this implicitly clear that, you know, you are not going to be allowed to exceed the boundaries of what is and isn't permissible. Now, this doesn't necessarily mean that they will never hire anyone that actually does a good job. But for every Jeff Stein or Dave Wagle at the Washington Post, there's about 10 more people who are like Jennifer Rubin. And, you know, they're so negative against Bernie Sanders that it almost seems like they have a personal vendetta against him. Like he wronged them personally, like he owes them money or something like that. And it's just, it's weird. It's jarring, right? You don't expect to see that from news outlets who purport to be objective and who purport to care about the news. You just don't see that. And look, the reason why Bernie Sanders is criticized, one, is because all these people in that, you know, elite DC bubble, they all hate Bernie Sanders. So they attend the same cocktail parties and whatnot. They're socially predisposed to hate Bernie Sanders. But they also know that Bernie Sanders threatens the status quo, the pro-corporate status quo more specifically. So that's why there's this visceral knee-jerk reaction to Bernie Sanders from these elite media people. Now, they then cut to a clip of Fa Shakir explaining how CNN's corporate advertisers are incentivized to tell a particular line and not rock the boat too much. But they follow that up when Fa's made a really great point saying, oh, well, he presented no evidence. The evidence was that you have certain advertisers, CNN in particular, they have corporate advertisers, health industry advertisers, right? So they advertise and they give CNN money, millions of dollars in advertising. The amount of money they spend per year is absolutely mind boggling, but we don't even need to present you with evidence that they're biased against Bernie Sanders because these advertisements persist because CNN doesn't want to do anything that would offend potential advertisers. Because just the mere fact that CNN is taking money from the health industry, these advertising dollars, I mean, this is a conflict of interest. You know, it, it's difficult to say whether or not CNN is questioning Medicare for All, for example, because they genuinely are confused about the details and think Bernie should elaborate, or if they're doing it at the behest of their, of their advertisers, if they're creating a type of safe space so advertisers don't feel apprehensive about advertising on CNN. It's a conflict of interest. And the fact that they're being disingenuous about that, the fact that they won't acknowledge that, I mean, it, it's, it's puzzling to me, right? There are conflicts of interest and perverse incentives in all news outlets, right? It's even in independent media. There's this incentive to get clicks. So this may make people in indie media more susceptible to sensationalism and clickbait bias. But at the same time, you know, we don't necessarily have to worry about advertising dollars. I'm not worried about saying something that will piss off, you know, Aetna because I don't have them as advertisers because I am independent.
You see what I mean? So the fact that CNN is not even acknowledging that is a little bit frustrating to me. They're pretending like, you know, they're holier than thou and they're not acknowledging that these are businesses. I mean, the Washington Post will literally block you from reading more than five articles per month and they will force you to pay them money. Now, on one hand, you can argue that individual memberships is better. You know, it's a better alternative to corporate advertising. And I would agree to an extent, but to completely block people from reading your news outlet if they don't pay. I mean, that demonstrates something that is painfully obvious. This is a business. They don't care about the delivery of news. That goal is secondary to the goal of making money and increasing profits. This isn't a labor of love for them. It's a business. This is how capitalism works. It corrupts everything it touches, and it turns the delivery of news even, which is crucial for democracy, into a money-making venture. That's what capitalism does. Whatever it touches, it turns to sh**. Healthcare democracy, news, it's the lowest common denominator. Now, I would love to live in a world where, you know, I could criticize CNN because I disagree with a pundit or two pundits and something that they said. Maybe I thought that their analysis wasn't objective. But we also are right to question that conflict of interest because you are a business. You do news, but that goal, again, is secondary. Now, what they do is they compare Bernie's attacks and criticism of the Washington Post to Donald Trump's. And something they said really struck a chord with me. Quote, considering the culture we're in where the media is under such constant attack, I think you should be careful about the accusations you make and you better be able to back them up. Okay, first of all, um, I find this incredibly ironic because the media in part contributed to Donald Trump's rise. Why? Because there is a sensationalism bias. Because sensationalist news stories, Donald Trump, for example, a loudmouth billionaire running for president, that is something that attracts eyeballs. And what attracts advertising dollars? So CNN, MSNBC, Fox News, these are all cable news outlets that are competing for advertising dollars. So they are going to cover what gets them the most amount of eyeballs, which gets them, you know, the best ratings. So in a way, you know, they kind of made this bed and now they're lying in it. They helped Donald Trump get elected. They legitimized him as a candidate. And now they're complaining about the consequences of that, about his attacks on the press. Well, maybe you should have been a little bit more responsible when you were covering someone who was a fascistic demagogue. Now, second of all, they are assuming that nuance doesn't exist. They're suggesting that we are unable to disaggregate an actual legitimate criticism of corporate media from Bernie Sanders from Donald Trump's attacks on the media. Um, no, we absolutely can and should do that. When Donald Trump calls a particular news story or a news outlet fake news, he's not doing it because he has this complex anti-capitalist critique of a particular news outlet. He's doing it because he doesn't like it. Anything he doesn't like, he calls fake news. But with Bernie Sanders, he is calling out the inherent conflicts of interest that end up leading to biased news stories. That's a very different thing. So for you to say that what Bernie Sanders is doing here is Trumpian, absolutely no, it's not Trumpian. Calling out the inherent conflicts of interest and perverse incentives within the pro-corporate capitalist news sphere isn't Trumpian. It's logical. It's the antithesis of Trumpism. And by linking Bernie Sanders to Donald Trump, they know exactly what they're doing. They're trying to delegitimize him, right? Because what these news outlets have are a ton of different powers. They can increase the salience of issues. Like if I think that immigration is a particularly important issue, they are able, just by covering something repeatedly, to raise the salience and the level of importance with which I view that issue by talking about it enough. That's what the news media can do. They can set an agenda. So if they think issues X, Y, and Z are popular, but you know A, B, and C are not, they can actually get that on the agenda of lawmakers. So these are very powerful institutions. But the problem is that these institutions have been corrupted by capitalism, corporate dollars, because these are businesses. I mean, think about this. How many um, pro-Medicare for All segments has CNN done? In fact, scratch that. How many just bland Medicare for All segments has CNN done where they didn't actually, you know, they didn't editorialize. They just said, these are the facts about Medicare for all. Take them or leave them. I mean, almost every single segment, I'd say 95%, if not more segments about Medicare for all, they are negative. They are absolutely negative. 
And this is why people don't trust you. I mean, there was a video with Chris Saliza where he talked about Medicare for All, and he made the assertion that it's not necessarily smart politically to promote this policy idea because the polls suggest that it wouldn't really, you know, do well. But that's just one poll. He cherry-picked a poll and ignored other polls. So we're not saying that CNN is going out of their way to make up facts. Nobody's asserting that. I don't think that they are as bad as Fox News, but with that being said, you can still twist facts, you can still promote a particular narrative, and that is hard. Harmful. This is what corporate media news outlets do. You know, they do what gets them the ratings and they oftentimes will stonewall anything that would affect their corporate advertising dollars. I mean, it's obviously in CNN's best interest to see us not get Medicare for all because if the private insurance industry goes out of business, then that is millions of dollars lost in advertising to CNN. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean that they will go out of their way to editorialize all healthcare related stories but i mean i think the outcome is obvious they're clearly biased right so the fact that they don't even admit to basic biases that isn't that, that are inherent in corporate media it's so frustrating to me you are a business not a news outlet you're not holier than thou stop being so disingenuous stop being purposefully obtuse and just do a better job like you are individuals who are employees at cnn so if you think that you're being criticized unfairly prove us wrong go out of your way to be one of the few at cnn or the washington post who are actually good there's not all bad people at these news outlets you know at cnn i really like allison camarota for the most part at the washington post i absolutely love the reporting of jeff stein he is probably the best reporter so it's not like it's all bad we're just saying do better and we're operating within the confines of a capitalist news structure so we know that there are these inherent conflicts of interest but i mean if you're worried about being accused of how biased you are either hide it better or just do better